What is good, y'all? Finally, your perfectly parallel people's champ has come back to WE Reviews. Today, we're diving into Dark Matter, that mind-bending Apple TV Plus show that makes Rick and Morty look like Sesame Street. Buckle up, because episode six, Superposition, throws more curveballs than a politician in court. We see Jason too, living the highlight, but not everything is as perfect as he thought it would be. Like, he is smooth. Smoother than an oiled up eel at a mud wrestling competition. And I can't help but wonder, is any of this charm just an act? What's the deal with the therapy sessions with Amanda One? Therapy with your ex? That's some next level emotional self-torture. This dude needs Dr. Phil more than he needs her. Also, Jason One and Amanda's journey is getting rough. They're running low on gamma radiation and facing existential questions about what makes you, you. But hey, at least they get a cute dancey. This episode is packed with revelations. We learn more about the box and how your emotional state affects where you travel. But first, look, all you new folks, I need you to do me a solid. Look, I don't normally do this, but I've noticed that these videos are getting somewhere between, I don't know, 500, 800 views. But sometimes I'm only seeing like 30, 40, 50 likes. Please, guys, I love doing this for you guys. Do me a big favor and please, please smash that like button, subscribe, or just watch more of these awesome videos. If you stumbled onto this episode six without first seeing the first five breakdowns, I got you covered with the link to the playlist chilling in the description below and sticky that's the first comment. Anyway, enough promotion. We open with Jason 2 smooth talking Daniela like a salesman with a lifetime supply of charm. He's showering her with gifts, hitting her with the nonstop riz, all while rocking a grin that says, I've got money. Also, today's the day that Jason's son Charlie is going to let the girl of his dreams know exactly how he feels more or less. Let's see how this turns out. We later see Jason 2 seeing off Layton 1 as he prepares to start a new life in the multiverse. And he basically asks him, yo bro, why are you stealing another man's wife? And Jason 2 stays silent. Here's my theory. This dude is all about results, not the process. He wants a family, but he ain't got the time to put in the work to fix things with his Daniela back at home. I mean, who wants to change diapers and date when you could just hop a reality tunnel to a happy ending? We later see Charlie getting picked up by Jason too. Charlie. Uh, now, I didn't notice just how tragic this was earlier. This kid's trying to woo his crush, but here's the twist. He's basically third wheeling with this other dude who made the move first. To make matters worse, Jason 2 tries to cheer Charlie up with ice cream and forgets Charlie has a nut allergy. Hilarious? Not really. Daniela, rightfully so, is livid. Now, hear me out. Some folks might think Daniela is overreacting because she gets pretty upset with Jason, but let's be real. Allergic reactions are no joke. Right? You have to understand that a large amount of parents go through a bad experience based on that allergy. And those experiences are absolutely terrifying. They leave a scar, both physically and emotionally. Later that night, Jason 2 somehow still shoots his shot with Daniela, highlighting just how absolutely oblivious he is to how much of an experience Daniela is having. And as fans, we're wondering just how much more she'll finally start to notice. We then switch to Jason 1 and Amanda. Welcome back. They're continuing to try to find Jason 1's world and he's getting closer, but key things are just slightly different each time that he tries. They're getting low on Ryan's gamma radiation, which is basically their multiversal gas money. Talk about a range anxiety nightmare. They decide to treat themselves to some good food after struggling for so long. They find out that the Amanda in this world is the manager of a white castle rather than a psychologist. And they start to have a mini existential crisis questioning 
what fundamentally makes you, you. They end up dancing for a bit and it's kind of sweet seeing them have some fun for once rather than always struggling. Things get awkward as the sexual tension gets amplified by the alcohol. We then switch to see Jason 2 in therapy? With Amanda? Yo, talk about a messed up twist. He's in therapy with the woman he left in order to discuss the woman he left her for. <laughs> Later, we see Daniela and Blair catching up and gossiping about Daniela's husband, astonishingly fast glow up. Now pay attention because you may have noticed that Blair be out here dropping wisdom like Maya Angelou at a poetry slam. She's basically the resident multiversal sage and Daniela tells Blair about how Jason has a lot of money now and he's always flossing and he dresses better and these differences are starting to add up, especially because he effed up and gave Charlie the ice cream with nuts in it. Jason too is talking about the same thing in therapy and he's trying to get insight on how to make it up to Daniela. Daniela is also telling Blair about how he's got track marks on his arm and is acting very, very sus. Blair starts spitting some wisdom and suggests that Daniela follow that ass. Now, things go completely left when Jason surprises Daniela with a night out at an art gallery at her job where she works every day and she's very confused. And let me tell you this, she gets the surprise of her life when Jason shows that he arranged for Daniela's own artwork to be on display at the gallery. Daniela's furious and rightfully so. And Jason too is clueless. He thinks he did something nice. This dude needs a reality check faster than you can say multiverse of mayhem. She explains just how humiliated she is that he violated her trust by taking something so personal of hers and putting it on display at an art gallery. That's her job, where she works every day. Now, some of you may still be confused, so I'll make it simple. Imagine someone taking your diary or your journal and publishing it in a book and handing it out to all your co-workers. There. Now you understand art. Jason too eats this loss hard. He drops Daniela off at the house and then drives off to go do who knows what in secret. But this time, Daniela's gonna follow that sage advice that she got from Blair earlier and she's gonna follow that ass to the storage locker that Jason too has been maintaining since he arrived on this world. Daniela sneaks behind Jason too in this place and She's even able to get her hands on an empty gamma radiation vial without breaking any rules punishable by law. For her, at least. We later see Daniela meeting up with Ryan later at his apartment. And is it me or is Ryan's apartment in this world the same place that Daniela was living in on Earth too? Anyway, she brings Ryan the empty vial and asks him, you know, as a chemist to figure out what was in it and tells him that she found track marks on Jason 2's arm. We later see Jason 1 and Amanda 2 continuing their attempts to find Jason 1's world. This time they split up, giving Amanda some time to recover from making a move on Jason. Jason heads to Daniela's art gallery and we see that Daniela is here with blonde hair. And I gotta admit, she doesn't look that bad with blonde hair. Jason chats her up for a bit before heading out. We then switch to see Amanda visiting the Amanda of this earth and she's seeing what kind of life she has and wow, this Amanda seems so happy. This Amanda has a man and a kid and is seemingly living the life of the upper middle class. Amanda and Jason meet up later that night and Jason admits as much when he tells her that he started understanding how Jason too did what he did because this world that they've been visiting is so close to his but not his and he's getting tired. His world is a grain of sand on an infinite beach and they're having a hard time locating it. 
Meanwhile, we switch back to Jason to back in therapy, whining about wanting to give up because he's been effing up. At this point, he can just go into the multiverse and do whatever he wants because why bother? And I gotta admit that my guy is sounding very Kang-like and this Amanda starts calling him out on his BS too. We later see Ryan confronting Jason too. The results are in and he's finished examining the vial that Daniela gave him. He wants to know how Jason got a hold of his secret formula without stealing it and wants to know what he's going to use it for. At first, Jason plays dumb, but after a few moments, he's like, F it. It offers to just show him what it's for. And just when you think this timeshare salesman has hit his quota, he brings Ryan to the box. And pay attention because this is when we get more clues about the box. They travel into the corridor and Jason explains that the box is a way for them to travel into a five dimensional probability space and the vial is to help them compensate for things it hasn't evolved to comprehend. What looks like a corridor is actually the box repeating itself across all possible realities that share the same coordinates of space and time. He explains that each door contains an infinite amount of variations of the world we know, some subtly different and some more mind-blowing. Jason also explains that aspects of your consciousness and even your emotional state determine which reality you enter when you open the door. So, basically, the box is a multiversal Uber taking you wherever you want to go in reality. Sounds cool with Jason 2 at the wheel, but the untrained navigator might end up in the upside down with a demigorgon waiting to greet you. This confirms what Blair was saying last episode and what we've been seeing evidence of in this episode as Jason 1 and Amanda have been traveling the multiverse. Jason brings Ryan to another world. He brings him to a world that is what he describes as a kinder and more progressive place than their worlds. He brought him to the kind of place that he thought his friend would kind of want to see. And then in that moment, we see just how much of a dick this Jason can be as he pulls a double cross, shuts the door, and leaves Ryan behind after taking his self. We then see Jason 2 finally stop effing around and actually builds the wall around the box. He's put the box in concrete and end credits. And wow, yo, this show is getting wilder. Jason 2 being an all around insensitive dick He's pissing off Daniela by caring about his dental health and dressing better, and also for taking the most vulnerable thing she owns and putting it on display for all her co-workers. Daniela watching Jason 2's art stunt is like watching a mama bear whose cubs just wandered into a poacher's convention. It, it got really messy. Not to mention the fuckboy move he did by kidnapping Ryan. Jason 2 ditches Ryan in another world faster than a politician getting rid of their problems before an election. And what's with him getting therapy from an alternate Amanda? Like, my guy literally has Amanda 2 puppy dogging after Jason 1, and he's over here getting therapy from her variant? And speaking of Jason 1 and Amanda, things are starting to feel hopeless. Like, we've seen them passively fulfill the promises of the entire Marvel multiverse saga in just one Apple TV series, with all of the alternate worlds that we've seen in just these six episodes. It is starting to wear on them. All right, folks. That's all I've got for this one. If you're new here to the fast and funky fun reviews, like I said earlier, please hit that like button, subscribe, and check us next week. Until then, 